Hello, I'm Clovis Casali in Paris. Time for Culture on France 24. Coming up on Encore. An exhibition on the great divas from the golden age of Arab cinema and music. Versailles welcomes back the luxurious desk of Louis XVI, but first to a very special kind of concert. With venues closed due to coronavirus, classical musicians are bringing their art straight to the homes of Parisians. Well, actually, only to the courtyards given the restrictions. Marie Schuster and Olivier Bizot followed a group of women delighted to perform after more than a year off the stage. Un peu abrupt, ouais. Nothing will stop them, be it coronavirus or the work it takes to continuously set the scene for each new concert. Over the past three weeks, Martin, Maruska, Yuku and Louise have been bringing opera to Parisian courtyards. The word has been spreading and their work multiplying. On this occasion, they were asked to perform in the courtyard of an affluent building in Western Paris for a resident's birthday. Although not everyone in the building was warned, which caused some tension. C'est pas un, un lieu de concert, d'accord? Je vous invite à aller au Champ de Mars, mais ici, il n'y en a pas question, d'accord? En plus, vous n'avez même pas demandé l'autorisation. Despite the complaint, the show went on. On a des attestations de travail, des contrats, donc on a tout à fait le droit de travailler. Et par ailleurs, le fait de le faire dans les cours, on demande aux gens de rester chez eux et d'ouvrir leurs fenêtres. Ce qui permet en fait de baisser considérablement le risque de transmission intrafamiliale qui est quand même très haut. Donc voilà, on a décidé qu'on était d'utilité publique. Most residents welcome the concert, a refreshing break from the monotony of lockdown. Il y a des copropriétés qui sont infiniment plus sympathiques que d'autres. Euh, je pense que c'est lié au fait que dans certaines petites copropriétés, tout le monde peut se mettre d'accord pour nous accueillir, ce qui fait qu'il y a une atmosphère commune, une envie commune, et c'est assez agréable, ça nous porte. Dans d'autres cas, c'est un peu moins, c'est moins l'unanimité, mais. En fin de compte, au début, c'est peut-être moins chaleureux, mais in fine, à la fin du concert, j'ai l'impression que les gens sont quand même contents et que, et que ça permet de, de fédérer. These artists are not yet able to make a living from their performances, but they have already achieved their objective to bring culture to life, no matter what it takes. Their voices and beauty made them the shining stars of Arab cinema and music. Some used their fame to promote feminism during the 20th century. An exhibition in Paris now explores the background and art of these female icons. Mandy Heshmati and Yuka Royer bring us this report from the Arab World Institute. They were true pioneers who ploughed through a patriarchal world and blazed the trail for others to follow. The new exhibition at the Arab World Institute, Divas, from Rune Kalthum to Dalida, honors the works and lives of some of the most iconic figures in the 20th century Arab cinema and music. Each of the women we've decided to honor here has an exceptional personality who emancipated themselves from male domination and played a fundamental role in music, dance or cinema. They are true visionaries who contributed to opening a path forward for generations of Arab divas that followed, who you see in the second half of the exhibition. Among those featured are legendary stars such as Wim Kalthum, Ferouz, Warda and Asmahan. Alongside their colourful stories, personal memorabilia and elaborate stage costumes are also on display. 
Um Kalsum was the biggest female Arab singer in the 1930s and is still huge today. Feirouz is a monumental figure in Lebanese songs. Warda had a different story, that of an exiled singer born in France who rose to fame in Egypt. And Asmahan, a Druze princess of Syrian-Lebanese descent who also played a very important role in the 1930s music world. Due to coronavirus restrictions, the exhibition is not yet open to the public. The organizers have compiled video excerpts and shared them online, highlighting the roles these women played in the art world and beyond. Some were pioneers in feminism, others were political activists. On International Women's Day in March, we published some content of the exhibition to promote these divas who are also feminists, another reason why we are showcasing them. For example, we shared the stories of dancers Tahiya Karioka and Samia Jamal, but also of Asmahan, who was not only a singer and an actress, but also a spy. She was really a free woman. These short videos allow us to share and promote our exhibition and to engage with the public that the show is eagerly waiting to receive. The colourful off-stage stories of these divas are as pertinent as ever in a world where women's fight for freedom continues. The death of King Louis XVI marked a turning point in French history. Along with the revolution, many symbols of his power vanished. His throne was destroyed, but not his luxurious desk. After two years of restoration, it's back at the Chateau de Versailles and is considered a masterpiece. Yinka Oyetadi has more. The Chateau of Versailles, the quintessential French heritage site spanning some 60 square kilometers, laden with history and full of surprises. After two years of restoration, the desk that belonged to King Louis XVI is making its comeback. Weighing 450 kilograms, the relic made up of precious wood and gilded bronze is one of a kind. It is considered as being the French meuble of the 18th century most important in the world. It is a meuble mythic. King Louis XV may have ordered for the desk to be made, but it was his son that used it. The only way to get access inside is with this fleur de lis key. It is a bureau of a model extremely ingenious. The principle is that there is only one key, and that it is this key that allows the opening and the closing of the cylinder, as well as the opening of all the tiroirs that are at the interior. Under the desk lies a secret button, used to open a concealed compartment, the perfect hiding place to store state secrets. During the French Revolution, Louis XVI's throne was destroyed, but his desk, which was considered a masterpiece, was spared only on the condition that all its royal emblems were replaced. Au revers du meuble, vous avez actuellement une tête de Minerve, et on sait que en dessous il y avait un profil représentant le roi Louis XV. During the restoration, craftsmen discovered an imprint of the king, just one of the many surprises on offer inside what is considered the most important piece of furniture in Versailles. Now to another symbol of France, la baguette. The French and many around the world treasure what is much more than just a breadstick. Could it be included to the UNESCO intangible cultural heritage list? Well, that's what the French are hoping and campaigning for. Yuka Royer tells us why. Since the very first baguette came piping hot out of an oven a century ago, its recipe has not changed. 250 grams of flour mixed with water, salt and yeast, baked at 270 degrees Celsius. Baked in 20 minutes. Each baker has his own little secrets, knowledge and skills to add to the breadstick. A good baguette is well cooked, has a nice shape, it's crusty on the outside. It should be a little white on the sides and fluffy inside, and voila. It's a source of baker's pride. Every artisan pours their heart and soul into these baguettes. When they come out of the oven looking impeccable, we're all very proud of our work. For many families, never a day goes by without a good baguette. Some 10 billion of them are consumed in France each year. We bake them every day from 5 in the morning to 8 in the evening. Now, 
France wants this quintessential staple to be listed in UNESCO's cultural heritage list. They're simply good. France has the best baguettes. No other country can make them as well as we do. It's part of our cultural heritage and history. It's a very good initiative. We should honor this French art. The UN's intangible cultural heritage status could help to protect the traditions and skills in making these baguettes from increasing competition from industrially made breadsticks. We need to protect artisan baguettes, long raised, hand kneaded, with choice ingredients, in other words, made through traditional methods. They're really at risk of disappearing, and that's why we must safeguard this know how. It's up to UNESCO to decide whether to include the French baguette in its coveted list. The result won't be announced until next year at the earliest. Well, that's it from the culture team here in Paris. The show was prepared by Magali Fort, Sophie Samay and Jennifer Ben Brahim. We leave you with the pictures of a film festival taking place online, of course, due to coronavirus. It's called Le Temps Presse, meaning time is running out. It's all about drawing attention to climate change while promoting ideals of sustainable development. Filmmakers Wim Wenders and Jan Kunen are some of those in the jury. Thank you all for watching and remember... You can find us and all our previous shows on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. I want to be an astronaut in a rock and roll band. Sometimes we have to ask for help and that's okay. Sneakers in the setting sun Oh, I wanna know love like when we were young At the end of September 2020, Azerbaijan launched a lightning war which left thousands dead in Nagorno-Karabakh. Within six weeks, the predominantly Armenian enclave had suffered a crushing defeat and large territorial losses. Ashko was Turka, Zakko was Turka, Bele was Turka. Today, how are the people of Karabakh coping with the trauma? And what role is being played by Russia, which sponsored the ceasefire? France 24 has been to Nagorno-Karabakh to find out. Reporters, presented by Mark Owen on France 24 and France24.com.